My perspective on resilience is somewhat different than the commonly defined notion of the, the quick bounce back, the quick bounce forward. I think that's more perseverance, persistence on a daily basis, which is important. But to me, resilience is wearing uh, your burden, uh, the load that you have in your life, the circumstances unforeseen that weigh you down. And I liken it to you know, a, a heavy sweater that you're clothed in. And to me, it's about uh, resilience is, is a mindset, it's an attitude of you know, come what will. I don't necessarily know that I'll be able to get through anything and everything. I'm a human being after all, but I have a, disp a disposition to, to move forward in, in small, small ways. So I, I liken to resilience to, to that small step under load. Um, and it can be as simple as asking someone else for help. Um, I don't think it's about bouncing back quickly. I think that definition uh, just betrays the reality of most of what we, what we deal with in the workplace as, as parents in our communities. Resilience is a long game. You know, it's, it's 18 holes. It's not a, a swing at the driving range. Um, and so it becomes more of a mindset and an attitude that uh, I don't know how things are going to go, but when they come, I'm going to weather the storm. I'm going to find a way to take a small step forward. When I think of leadership and one takeaway that stays with me, maybe above all others, it's this idea that there's so much more value in the reflection that comes after action taken, both for yourself as a leader and also your team. And so I think one of the most important things a leader can do is with authenticity and character and vulnerability, build connections with their teams so that they want to follow that leader and the leader can actually get them to take the action so that now they can have some insights and actually debrief something that happened rather than get mired in things that have not yet been undertaken. I think too often, whether it's in sports or in the workplace, we have meetings upon meetings and we want to analyze to death the situation when really what needs to happen is the leader needs to say, hey, this is where we're going. Give me this quarter. Give me six months, whatever the timeline is. But they need to have the relationship capital to be able to do that. And that comes with authenticity, with leading with character, uh, and being open and honest with your people. But I think reflection after action is much more powerful in a way than, than the pre-planning process and thinking of all the possibilities. We went into London ranked third in the world. We had a disastrous first heat. We came in last by 13 seconds. And it felt like our Olympics was absolutely tanked. And what happened between the heat and what's called the repechage, which was our last chance to qualify for the finals, was we held a meeting, as we always did, back at our hotel where we were staying. And our coach began dissecting what happened in the race. And we could all of us hear panic entering his voice, which was unusual because usually he was steadfast and he was the voice of calm and reason and assurance. And here he was uh, cracking with a little bit of panic. And what happened in that moment for us as a team was we could have gone two ways, I think. One way we could have gone was to say, wow, our coach doesn't, you know, is not even able to handle, handle the pressure. How can we handle the pressure? But what we did was and an element of leadership that Mike instilled in us was to have a desire to bail him out. You know, this idea that a great coach prepares you to have your best performance. They're with you day in and day out over a period of years. Um, and so I think the lasting impression was, you know, we're gonna bail, we're gonna go and bail out our coach, you know, and it's gonna be on us to do it. Um, he might be momentarily dispatched from us but we're gonna bail them out. And so it was really a moment of the team coming together in a way of, of respect for the journey we'd been through, but wanting to, to prove to our coach even that he was right with how he trained us and that his plan was a good plan and we were gonna go execute it for each other, um, but for him as well. Well, when I reflect on that journey with those eight other teammates working towards an Olympic games, what stays with all of us, I think, is the deep personal connection we have with each other formed by going through adversity. I don't think that it's something you can speed up. 
I think, you know, the, the, the fabric that bonds a team together really is the adversity that they go through together. And so once we had gone through a World Cup event where we had struggled and we had questioned each other, we had questioned our approach, but then to go on and have another one, each time we faced a challenge, uh, reflected, analyzed, and then moved forward, we were becoming stronger as a team. So I think of the best way to, to form strong bonds and teams is adversity plus time. Um, can you create an environment where you can keep the nucleus of the team together long enough so that they can face some adversity um, and get through it together? I don't think you can shortcut that process. So adversity plus time to me, um, and, and successfully overcoming that adversity, of course, is what creates great, great teams.